Good morning, Lita. How are you? So glad you're here with me today. Good morning. Good morning. It is February 27th, uh, 2022. This is uh, the daily Bible study. Good morning, Anne. Good morning, Cassie. Um, and I am Lori. This is Elizabeth Sharon Ann's daily Bible study. And uh, I am Lori. And please remember, good morning, uh, to put any prayer requests. Um, good morning, Rhonda. Prayer requests or praise reports uh, in the comments that we can put those in the prayer journal and um, rejoice with you guys. I'm so late this morning I was reading uh, something I wanted to talk about, uh, today in a book that I had been reading and I wanted to share it with you because it goes with the scriptures but let's get in um, the things that we're in Leviticus 2022 let's see how do I gather my thoughts. Um, yesterday's reading in Leviticus was um, more about Um, do not live according to the customs of the people I'm driving out before you. Good morning, Tony. So happy. It makes me smile when I see you on here. Um, not live according to the customs of the people I am driving out before you. Um, which, as I relate that to my life, is, you know, supposed to live according to the customs of this world and society, which I think we get wrapped up in. And well, I shouldn't say we, I think I get wrapped up in sometimes and that um, entice what the world is offering because it's a little bit more tangible than the spiritual and the eternal. You can feel it. Um, physically feel it. Um, I hate just because, uh, you know, when we get in the presence of God, we can physically feel him too. But anywho, um, he has set us apart. I am the Lord who has set you apart from all other people. You must be because I, the Lord, am holy. I have set you apart from all other people from my very you know, through Leviticus, it talks about, well, he's done different sacrifices to purify the people. Um, <clears throat> it says at the end of every um, stanza there that um, I, the Lord, am holy and I make you holy. And then when he's talking about the priest, he says, I am the Lord who makes him holy. When he's talking about his places, the most holy of holy, I am the Lord, them holy. Now he's talking about the priests again. He says, I am the one who makes them holy. So 
as I was reading this and studying last night, I thought, God, what is holy? What is holy? Um, and I've really been listening to, I've been listening to a series by um, Pastor Michael Todd um, out of Tulsa, and it's called Here is Holy. So he's been talking a lot about holiness. Um, but the things that, that, that came to me as I was studying last night is um, uh, that holiness is our heart posture. It's our heart posture. Um, it is not perfection. Um, which is what I used to think a lot. Um, and holiness is wherever God is, that is holy because God is holy. Um, the biblical definition of holiness is something or someone that is separated and dedicated to serve and fulfill the will of God. Um, and what I began to think about with the scripture about driving, don't live according to the customs of the people that he's driving out, is that when we get together with like-minded people, like if what came to my mind was at a retreat, when we would get together with like-minded people, like at a retreat, we're all there for one purpose. We all believe that God is the answer to all of our problems. Um, and we're doing God and there, there is so much peace. There is so much love. There's so much acceptance. And Confront people directly so you will not be held guilty for their sin. Um, and yesterday that scripture jumped out at me um, because we have been in the house for four days, four snow days. And um, as I've talked about before, you know, my grandson has some behavioral problems and um, I would like to say that I was super spiritual and not ready to pinch his little head off. Um, but but I wanted to pinch his head off. I don't think that I have hatred, but um, you know, if we nurse those resentments and those um, feelings that are contrary to the things that we're supposed to to um, contrary to the emotions that God created us to have. Um, if we nurse those things, they begin to grow in our heart. Like, um, like a little, I don't know, there's a show I was watching once um, and it showed a heart, um, a crystal heart. And um, they were, there was just a little black spot in the middle of the heart. And as that person began to nurse the hatred and the resentment and the bitterness and unforgiveness thing, um, the little spot of black began to take over the red. And if we nurse those things, our heart become hard and black. Um, good morning, Mama Sharon. Um, so, I mean, once again, I think that that is um, oh yes, Rita, that's very good. What you 
grows. That is absolutely true. And the world is not really about forgiveness, except though right now they have this um, diluted perception of what real love is, what God's love is um because they're all about love yourself love which we should love ourselves love our neighbors ourselves. but our focus is not to be on us Um, what uh, when he they're talking about they go and they see Jesus and Moses and Elijah on the mountain and he said um, and they're talking um, and Peter exclaimed Rabbi it's wonderful us to be here let's make three shelters as memorials one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't really know what else to say, for they were terrified. Um, I don't know why that jumps out at me so much. I mean, they're terrified. How? I don't know. I've never been terrified so much. Um, Maybe scared that he's going to. Um, I just can't get my thoughts together this morning, guys, and I apologize for that. Um, you know, I think, or if I guess I sit here and think about this, um, that they were. When I think there's going to take something from me that I think that I need. Um, when he's asked to deal with something um, and I want to hold on to it because I think it's going to benefit me. But you know, the boundaries and the, like he did in Leviticus, the, the guidelines, the intentional limits that God sets for us is really. You know, where our freedom is. Um, and instead of thinking, um, instead of thinking that it is keeping something from us, it is really giving us so much more, more of Him, which is what we really want. Um, I also thought when, um, and I guess I never really noticed, well, it made me chuckle this year when I read it, you know, when they bring the, the boy um, to the disciples and they can't um, free him from the demon. And Jesus says, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Well, because I've been stuck in the house for four days with a grandchild who has behavioral issues. I'm thinking, I think the exact same thing, not for the same reasons, but I think the exact same thing. I mean, it's so nice that God was part human, part God. Um, the father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. You know, I thought about that. There's so much in my life, like, um, I guess my, I don't know, I see, I guess my battle, my battle to bring, to bring, battle to bring, it's really not my battle. Um, the, um, 
struggled with my daughter started when she was 16. Um, and we started fighting and um, it went on for a number of years, a number of years. She is now two, so I think she um, came back to God, I want to say maybe two years ago. I could be wrong. It could be three, but I think it was two. Anywho, so that's a long time. That's like 15 years. Um, so during that time, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed, but because, um, maybe I interpreted what God said to me wrong. Maybe my perception was wrong, um, for whatever over the years, when I began to pray, um, I had unbelief. It was there. I mean, did I really think God was going to do it? I mean, here we go. We're around this mountain again. Do I really think he says he's going to do? Um, and the answer is no, I didn't. I did not think that. Um, but I will say in that struggle, um, I did continue to pray for her, even though I did have unbelief. But um, the key to um, God getting hold of my daughter was me letting go of her, and which was no easy task, no easy task. Um, it was only by the grace of God that I was able to just lay her at his feet. And um, there were several prayer meetings and several um, times with God that I thought I had done that, or maybe I did do that, and then I would pick it back up and try to control out of fear. Um, but there was one day that I we were in a prayer meeting, a Bible study group with um, my closest group of friends. And um, I was able to let her go and trust. Well, I don't know if I trusted in that moment. I just know I let her go. And um, shortly after that, um, I went to two weeks. It's um, really amazing when I think about it. And I look at her, with her today. Um, that God just changed her overnight. Um, so I think that we all have unbelief. Um, we all have some unbelief. You know, I mean, I know that it's a little bit different in this scenario that we're reading today, but um, we all have unbelief. And as long as we keep running to him and going it'll get better um then it uh his disciples they go and they talk and his disciple asked him why they couldn't cast out this evil spirit and jesus replied this kind can can be cast out only by prayer and some uh, translations say prayer and fasting, which is the one I am most uh, familiar with, prayer and fasting. Um, and so I wanted to, and this is, I'm gonna be real honest here. Those of you who have been to the retreats know that I've had this struggle with food and, And so, oh, God, it's so funny. I've had this struggle with food. And so I was reading a new book, or it hadn't really been new. I was reading um, <clears throat> a, a, a book I had gotten by Lisa Bevere. It is called It's Not How You Look, It's What You See. Change your life and change your life. So, so funny, I get the 
fast. And lo and behold, God's talking about fasting, which he's been doing since December or maybe since the last re retreat, retreat before last, y'all. Retreat before last. God has been talking to me about fasting and I'm obedient. So you know that just because we do these Bible studies on Sunday morning or whoever does them, we don't have it all together. I do not have it all together. Um, or am I 100% obedient all the time? But um, anywho, uh, and my daughter said to me, because I've been going through this thing, you know, I don't know if it's because I had COVID. I don't know if I had COVID because I didn't test. Um, but, um, or if it's because God is trying to tell me to get your head out and get it together and do what you're supposed to do. Um, but I haven't really had any taste. Can't taste anything hardly, um, which is annoying. But do you think that stops me from eating? No. And why does that stop me from eating? Because it's comfort to me. Um, and it is not supposed to be. But um, lo and behold, I get to um, the end of this book and she's talking about fasting. Now, I know that um, in the scripture we're reading today, it's talking about, um, you know, that that can only come out by prayer and fasting. And this is talking, I truly believe this and I've known this. Um, let me say first, when I early on, um, I fasted multiple times. It was, it was not hard. I, you know, we're just when we first know the Lord, I fasted a lot. Um, and I fasted with the wrong motivation. Um, since that time, I have not fasted um, because, quite frankly, I love food. And food is an idol in my life that God is removing um, a little more. And so it, I've not had um, taste for a lot of things. And so my daughter says to me the other day, which I really believe speaking to me, maybe you can't taste because you're eating the stuff you're not supposed to eat. And which I think is true. Um, but anywho, to talk about fasting, I wanted to read just a few excerpts from, from this book. I just wanted to share a little bit with you because I think it is true. Um, you know, it says that fasting is a time of cleansing that allows the Holy Spirit to flow through me. It's precious in the holy, God's word and anointing from the vial, my agenda and prejudices. So once again, we're talking about if we're going to go on a fast, even if we're going to go on a fast. To be well, fasting is setting yourself apart to be holy, to be closer to God. Um, it's designed change the way you look <clears throat> but to change it's not designed to change the way you look and feel but to change the way you perceive and live as a diet may change the way you look but a fast a fast will change the way you live a fast will change the way you see it will alter your inner perspective the deepest transformations are wrought from the inside out if God is not in the center of it, it will be reduced to merely a time of dimming, which I believe is so true. Um, and then Psalms 6910 and the New King James Version says, I wept and chastened my soul with fasting. Changes your perspective by changing your focus. Because when I no longer am, am, am granted, um, the food thing is, is my issue right now. It's the thing that, that God is 
been with me on, there are a couple of things, but the food issue is um, one of the big things. Um, so if I am not thinking about what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to cook, um, what I am I eating, what I shouldn't eat, instead of eating what I should eat, about those things, I'm not thinking or focusing on God. And if chasing my soul, my desires, my wants, the fasting, then my focus changes and so my perception changes. Um, it's about separation. Um, separate yourself to him. Ask God to rebuild the influences and areas that stand as a hindrance between you and a deeper relationship with him. So those are the excerpts I wanted to read out of the book. I think they're so good. I mean, but let's, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't want to fast because I like to eat. I don't want to fast because I'm afraid that if I fast um, and, and I get my, my soul under control, which is what it needs, Lord help me, it needs to be, um, um, I won't be able to have the things that I enjoy. Um, so once again, it's these, these limits, these boundaries on us, which is where our freedom is. But because I am so focused on the flesh and how it makes my flesh feel for a split second, because, you know, sin is only good for a season. So um, being disobedient is You God, it is not um, it is not easy to do anything. It's not easy to um, not cuss at the guy who cut me off or the guy who's going five miles an hour when clearly you can go, you know, twenty miles an hour. Um, it's it's not easy to love if your soul is not. So to the word of God and um, you know and if we can't submit our soul if I can't submit my soul to the word of God then I can't believe in the truth I believe in the lies that my my soul has told me um, that God's only going to restrict me he's only going to take things that are that I love away from me which is not true I'll never be able to, you know, such and such again, which is not true. Um, but here's the deal. Um, I was, um, when I was listening to Pastor Michael Todd preach on holiness the other day, he said something about limits. And a person who doesn't know limits feels restricted. And I'm honest with you, I, um, I don't think I'm a person that knows limits. I think that I'm a person who goes all out um, one extreme or the other. Um, either I'm gonna go full out until I kill myself or I'm just gonna not do anything. That's where I live. But the goal is to live in the tension between the two. Um, where you know what the limit is. You can't go this far, you can't go this far. You've got to live in the tension between the two. 